Now, if you had one really violent day, like a guy like Mike Kelly put him in charge, Congressman Kelly put him in charge for one day. Mike, would you say, he's right here. He's a great congressman. Would you say, Mike, that if you were in charge, you would say, oh, please, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Let them rob your store. Let All these stores go out of business, right? They don't pay rent. The, the city doesn't have money. The whole, it's a chain of events that's so bad. One rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out, and it will end immediately. End immediately. You know? It'll end immediately. No, your ears aren't deceiving you. Donald Trump actually just recommended unadulterated violence against citizens in order to deter crime. And before he made that recommendation, he was specifically talking about theft, which seems very proportional. Now, to be fair, he did only endorse state-sanctioned violence against civilians for one hour after initially saying that police should be able to do violence against us for a full day. So I think that's incredibly gracious of him. But nonetheless, the point that he's making, obviously, is that police should be able to do violence against people they're supposed to protect because that's how you're really going to deter crime. Now, I don't think that this is a serious policy proposal from Donald Trump, obviously, but the sentiment should still be alarming to all of us, nonetheless. I mean, this is a presidential candidate who could win, who's talking about doing violence against civilians in a very cavalier way, and we're all just kind of like, yeah, that's Donald Trump. He always says dumb stuff like this. The fact that this type of rhetoric for political candidates has been normalized is really a dark sign of what's to come in America, I think, because let's say he loses this election. How long until a different fascist actually capitalizes on our political apathy? Like, it's it's dangerous. We shouldn't just accept this. And it's disturbing because police can already steal from us thanks to civil asset forfeiture, not to mention they have qualified immunity, which shields them from accountability if they violate our rights, not to mention they commonly already kill people, mostly black and brown unarmed armed people with impunity, but Trump thinks that that's not enough. They need to be able to do more to deter crimes, right? And a lot of people are pointing out that this recommendation he's making sounds eerily familiar to the plot of the movie The Purge. And if you haven't seen the movie, let me just read the synopsis for you so that way you get a sense as to why people are making this comparison. Per Wikipedia, in 2014, a political party called the New Founding Fathers of America are voted into office following an economic collapse and pass a law sanctioning The Purge, an annual event wherein all crime, including murder, is legal and emergency services are unavailable for 12 hours. By 2020, the United States is said to have become virtually crime-free with legal unemployment rates having dropped to 1%. Now, I saw the movie, and if you watch the movie, the logic behind The Purge is that if you let citizens get all the violence out of their systems, then society will function much more smoothly as a result. You just have to deal with that momentary violence, but then everything else is going to be copacetic and peachy keen. But Trump thinks that society is going to function better if we do a cop version of the purge which is seemingly worse because he doesn't think that citizens should be able to fight back against police violence in this hypothetical police purge but i mean that's worse than the movie itself because at least in the purge you could defend yourself from people doing violence but trump somehow concocted a worse version of the purge which kind of proves that reality really is stranger than fiction. But after his comments went viral, his campaign responded with the same bullshit we've come to expect. Politico reports asked whether the former president's idea amounted to a new proposal and how such an operation would work. A campaign official said Trump was clearly just floating it in jest. President Trump has always been the law and order president, and he continues to reiterate the importance of enforcing existing laws. Stephen Chung, the campaign's communications director, wrote in a statement to Politico. Otherwise, it's all out anarchy which is what Kamala Harris has created in some of these communities across America, especially during her time as California Attorney General when she emboldened criminals. It's honestly astonishing to me that his campaign is still referring to him as the law and order president after he was convicted of 34 felonies this year and last year he was found liable for rape in civil court. I mean, the party doesn't think that felons should be able to vote, but yet they think that Trump, a literal felon, should be able to become president. Is this not mind-boggling? But according to his team, you know, he wasn't serious. He was just saying that in jest, it was nothing more than a hilarious joke. Sure, 
as evidenced by the fact that he was very clearly laughing and people were also laughing and not applauding like seals after he said that. Now, I do want to back up and give you some additional context because before he recommended the purge, he was talking about how bad crime has gotten, specifically with regard to theft, as I mentioned earlier. And he said that it's so bad that people are walking into stores with calculators and they're adding up what they're stealing so that way they don't surpass the threshold of what they can legally steal in California since radical Democrats effectively legalized crime, according to him. The problem is that that's bullshit. Politico continues, Trump's comments came during a section of his speech in which he falsely suggested you could steal up to $950 worth of merchandise without consequence in California, a reference to Proposition 47, which reclassified some theft offenses from felonies to misdemeanors. Harris was California State Attorney General when California voters approved that ballot initiative but she remained neutral on the matter. The dollar threshold Trump referenced actually became law four years earlier, signed by then-Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, a Republican. So his claim is founded on bullshit, predictably so. But this extreme fear-mongering over crime that we're seeing from him comes at a time when crime is on the decline. As NBC News reports, overall crime went down from 2022 to 2023, according to data from the FBI. This includes violent crime and property crime, which went down 3% and 2.4% respectively, not to mention murder and manslaughter, which decreased by 11.6%, which is the biggest single year decline in 20 years. Furthermore, burglary decreased by 7.6%, although to be fair, vehicle theft and recorded incidents of shoplifting did go up. Although when it comes to theft, even though it went up, it's back to pre pandemic levels. But the overall trend is positive, yet Donald Trump wants you to think that you should be hysterical to the point where you're endorsing a purge for police officers, where they get to do wanton violence against all of us to deter people from doing crime. But ask yourself this, crime is down overall, but recorded incidents of shoplifting, they've increased and they're now comparable to 2019 levels. There were about 150,000 more recorded incidents of theft in 2023 than there were in 2022. Does that really warrant unmitigated violence against American citizens, state sanctioned violence? Is that really a proportionate response to 150,000 more theft instances, really? I mean, if you think that that is a reasonable take, then you need to have your head examined. And odds are, if we looked into your brain, we'd see a lot of propaganda from Donald Trump in local news. But if theft is such a concern, why doesn't Donald Trump talk about the most common form of theft in America? Wage theft. And the reason why he's not talking about that is uh, because, well, you know what? Let me just play a clip for you because he answered that question at the same rally. And, you know, it's going to lead to great things. A lot of people don't give. I know a lot about overtime. I'd hated to give overtime. I hated it. I'd get other people. I shouldn't say this, but I'd get other people in. I wouldn't pay. I hated. This is going to lead to a lot more. I think it's going to be economically positive, but I'm not even doing it for that reason. I'm doing it because like, like the no tax on overtime, it's something so good. Funny he admits this because failure to pay overtime is one of the most common forms of wage theft in the country. So ironically, at the same rally where he endorsed the purge for petty theft, he admitted to being a thief himself, but I don't think he was suggesting police violence against himself or fellow wage thieves. Of course not. He was exclusively talking about violence against the peasants because when they commit crime, specifically when they commit theft, Hellfire should rain down on them. But when he commits crime and oligarchs like him commit wage theft, well, it's no problem. In fact, when he's finally held accountable for his numerous crimes, the entire justice system is corrupt and being weaponized against him. And he's the vi biggest victim in the history of victims. It's astounding, isn't it? You know, a 2017 study from the Economic Policy Institute found that employers steal billions of dollars worth from their employees in various forms of wage theft every single year. And that ranges from overtime pay theft to off the clock work to misclassifying workers as independent contractors to stiff them. But notice how Donald Trump only cares about theft when him and his rich friends are the victims. See, he can steal from you. And it's funny, right? But if you steal from one of his rich friends, steal from a big box retail store, well, then he wants to do a purge. Isn't that funny? See, this right here is class warfare. And unfortunately, so many Americans have been brainwashed into thinking that this oligarch, Donald Trump, actually cares about them when he doesn't give a fuck about them. And he is using his biggest supporters and trying to hawk bullshit to them nonstop, selling them NFTs, cryptocurrency, Bibles, watches, sneakers, and they eat that shit up.
they think he actually cares about them. This man somehow has working class appeal when he is the antithesis of a working class presidential candidate. He is the oligarch that is the reason why income and wealth inequality in this country is so bad, right? He cut his own taxes. That's his main accomplishment as president. Now, if you don't think that Donald Trump actually does have working class appeal, listen to some numbers provided by Harry Enten of CNN, because it's real. This is union households. This is democratic margin in presidential election. It ain't what it used to be. You know, you go back to 1992, Bill Clinton won that union vote by 30 points. Hillary Clinton only won it by 12 points back in 2016. That was the lowest mark for a Democrat since 1984, Mondale versus Reagan. But look at where Kamala Harris is today. She's only leading by nine points. That would be the worst Democratic performance in a generation, 10 points off the mark of Joe Biden, who of course won four years ago, who was sort of that union guy, Union Joe, right? Won it by 19 points. She's 10 points off his mark, and the worst in a generation if this, in fact, holds Sarah. It is interesting to note that the difference between this and this, and Biden still won. Still won. But those numbers are significantly down. All right, talk to me about manual labor, those folks who went to trade schools. Yeah, those folks who use their hands. I think a lot of people oftentimes conflate the union vote with those who use their hands. Mike Rowe, of course, has been arguing more people should go to trade schools, more people should get a vocational degree. Look at this margin. This, wow. to me, oh boy, does this tell you about the state of our politics now versus back in the early 1990s, margin among vocational and trade school grads in pre-election polling. Bill Clinton was leading that vote over George H.W. Bush by seven points. Look at where Donald Trump is today over Kamala Harris, a 31 point advantage. When I think people think of the working class, they think of people who use their hands. And we know that Donald Trump has been going after that vote and he is in a very, very strong position, more so perhaps than any other bloc, the folks who go to trade school, vocational school, that has moved from being a core Democratic group to now being a core group of Donald Trump's massive amount of support among the working class. So as Trump becomes even more openly antagonistic towards the working class and admits that he's engaging in wage theft and laughs with Elon Musk about him firing striking workers, his support among the working class and union households in particular is only increasing. Isn't that funny? The question is, why is this happening? Why aren't people waking up to the con that is Donald Trump? And I think that the most obvious answer is that Democrats are in power now and Americans always blame the party in power whenever they're not feeling good about the economy. This isn't necessarily unique to the United States. This happens in other countries as well. But I mean, people are right to feel like things aren't that great right now. Sure, inflation has stabilized, but prices are still too high and Americans have struggled to get by. But with that being said, Biden literally did pass the Inflation Reduction Act and Harris is vowing to rein in corporate price gouging and Republicans, including Donald Trump, are against that. But it doesn't matter though, because because American voters don't vote based on policy, they vote based on vibes. Things feel bad right now, so they're blaming the party in power, and that party is Democrats. But I think that's only a part of it, right? Another part of it is that the high support Bill Clinton enjoyed from union households started to gradually decline in large part thanks to the neoliberalism that he ushered in within the Democratic Party. And all of that corporate neoliberalism has continued to plague the Democratic Party till this day. They continue to prioritize the profits of their corporate contributors over their own fucking constituents, and that's bad. Now, the same obviously is true for Republicans, but they were always the party of big business, so nobody expected them to be the party of the working class. Democrats were always expected to do better since they market themselves as the party of the working class, right? So it's a problem. And I'd say that the surge in support Trump is seeing among working class Americans, as well as non-college educated folks, is part self-inflicted by Democrats and also part out of their control. But I don't think that that should really make us feel any better because a huge number of Americans are choosing to vote for Donald Trump in spite of so many things, in spite of his racism, in spite of the insurrection, in spite of the threat that he poses to democracy, in spite of the class warfare that's in front of their faces. I mean, again, this man's only major policy achievement was to cut the taxes for himself and his rich friends, but people ironically are putting aside all of that and they're voting for Trump out of self-interest when literally voting for him isn't in their best interest unless they're millionaires. And it's embarrassing 
because it speaks to how short our collective memory is as a country. But I do understand why people are apprehensive about voting for Democrats, because as a leftist myself, I have an endless amount of critiques about the Democratic Party. But being dissatisfied with the Democratic Party doesn't automatically make Trump and the Republicans a better or appealing alternative. You don't drink bleach if your water tastes a little bit weird or you find a speck of dirt in it, right? You try to fix the problem. You get a water filter or you figure out why the water is contaminated. But unfortunately, in American politics, a lot of us do drink bleach. That's what we opt for. That's the reality of the situation. Vibes currently indicate that Donald Trump is a better alternative for working class people. And it doesn't matter that he wants to end democracy and become a dictator on day one. It doesn't even matter that he's a felon and a rapist, even though Americans are very much anti-crime. They're okay with that felon and that felon only. It doesn't matter that he's an associate of Jeffrey Epstein and Americans say that that's something that's bad, right? It doesn't matter that he just endorsed a purge and said that police officers should be able to abuse people to scare us into not doing crime. The fact remains that he can still win this election. That's the reality of American politics. So let that sink in. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.